I think our two callers actually showcase the, the quickest, one of the quickest fixes I would recommend, which is obviously painting something that's already existing in your home, furniture, chandeliers, uh, you know, one wall, as you had mentioned, would be fine. But I think, you know, the the power of paint, it's, it's pretty amazing. And if you like the bones of something, you can probably change it. And I was looking at your, at your website, and you really have a good philosophy that I had never really pa- factored into my brain, which is you do not have four walls in your room. You have five walls. You have got yeah. five, the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that would be the second one that I would suggest, is that people underestimate with the uh, the drama or even the subtlety and the finishing touch that painting your ceiling can do it really feels deliberate and complete and it can either be enveloping and sort of sexy and sumptuous or it can be your wow factor and um, it's really just one wall so if you want to redo it three times a year which i have some clients that that want to do that wow yeah well i mean you know if it's your dining room and you want something totally spicy there Mm. there are some of these finishes that don't take very long to do that you think do Uh, is it a misconception or is it true that we have sometimes we're afraid to paint the ceiling ceiling it's going to make the room look smaller yeah that's like the 80s blush thing coming back I mean, that's a total misnomer, and it's a really, it's a shame, especially, you know, I go into some really sensational spaces architecturally, and when you see people who have just put that fish belly contractor white on the ceiling, it's a shame. It should even just think about it just being cream. Why did you have to call it that? Now I never want to see it in my house again. <laughs> that's what we call it. <laughs> okay. Let's repeat that, everybody. Fish belly contractor white. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that image. You're welcome. <laughs> so what can we do? What are some quick things we can do uh, to go opposite fish belly contractor? Con- I want that on a t-shirt. Uh- <laughs> I have lots of them for you. We call it Versace Tumachi when people go overboard. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> I want one more before you go. Okay. Overfowed. I got lots. <laughs> It's over. Okay. So, anyways, no. If, if for ceilings, I can't even speak. Go. <laughs> for ceilings, if people are into sort of this classic, contemporary, more organic mm-hmm. colors, you know, neutrals, whether uh, it's beige and you know, sort of these mid tones, take the color that's on your walls and cut it by fifty percent. If you take the color that is on your walls and cut it by fifty percent, it feels like you wrapped the entire room in that color, and it's really um, shocking how how unnoticeable and noticeable that is because you walk into the room and it really does feel finished. I'm going to need help with this one. Okay. Take the color on your walls mm-hmm. and then do what to it? I'm sorry, I should explain that further. Yeah, cut the formula by 50%. So whatever color you have on your walls, mm-hmm. reduce the, the intensity? That's right. And when you go to your paint store, whoever your local paint store is, um, the big box stores, sometimes they don't like to do it, but they but they will. It, it, they are simply taking the formula of the color in its full strength, and they're cutting it by 50%. And what you're doing is you're not removing the, the, um, the tone. We're not the value, but the tone of it is remaining. So if it's got a green base, it still will have a green base. It'll mm-hmm. just be lighter. Unlike when, you know, when you look at a paint swatch and it's got yeah. sort of the gradation of colors. Those are all still different formulas, and your eye reads them as the same, but but they may not be, and they may refract light differently. And then that goes on your ceiling. Correct. You say they're not always that they're not always that crazy about doing it. Pardon me. Yeah, they're not the paint stores are not, all, not always that crazy not about always, but like a Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams, a dr- those people will absolutely do it for so you. So the terminology that we would use when we walk in, this is what I'm painting my walls. Can you reduce this by fifty percent? Yes, you say I'd like for you to cut the formula of this paint, you know, or this color by 50%. Sometimes you can even do 25 or 75% if you really want to get wild, but so, 50% works um, usually. And that makes the room look finished. Yes. I like that. Now, what if we want to add, I'm going to use a word, I know it kind of sits not too well with you, faux, or some other technique on the ceiling. <laughs> what What's one thing we can do as homeowners that would go, a stripe, an embellishment, a, 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 a something, a flourish? Okay, so I, one of my all-time favorite little gems of a website out there is called Modelo Designs, M-O-D-E-L-L-O Designs, and, and uh Melanie Royals, who owns this company, she's out of San Diego, and this is production stencils and Modelo's. Modelo is like a giant sticker, and a stencil is obviously, most people know what a stencil is. Yes. You know, you apply the paint. There are so many options for even the most subtle design to the most wow, over the top, oh my gosh, I can't believe, how did you do that? 
um, homeowners will be surprised at, at what they can achieve on their own through these stencils and modellos. And I'm a big I'm a big fan of pattern. I think pattern is a huge trend if it's used tone on tone and it's subtle and it's graphic, or if it's over the top and glamorous like a big damask and you apply it two or three different times to the wall in different colors. You can mimic some of these high, high end wall finishes. <gasps> I'm and looking at them right now, and you're right. I am saying, "Wow!" Right? It's amazing. <gasps> wow! <laughs> Modellodesigns.com. You have to check it out. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. And I'll again link to that on my website too. I mean, I just can't say enough about the impact that that can make in such a short period of time. Oh. And and then you really feel, you know, how sometimes these do-it-yourself projects, people get into them and they get so disappointed with themselves and so down. Mm-hmm. And they call us and they say, can you come over? And you know what? They were only 20% of the way through it, but it makes it seem on you know, a lot of shows or television that you can do it overnight. And you can't. But this is the kind of thing where you get that instant gratification that a lot of homeowners want immediately. And these are ways that we can sort of widen our creative scope in our home. And they say, don't take it to 20%. Take it to 100%. Finish it out. Yeah, and then well, decide. I mean, yeah. there's plenty of, and, and in that, if you're going to take it to 100% in finishing out a project and really kind of knocking it out of the park, I mean, I know most people don't want to hear this, but I don't think it would be a bad idea to just have have a professional come over and consult with you for an hour. It'll be the best hour you spent. Otherwise, you're going to end up, people just get so, I, I hate it when a homeowner, it's your home. You should feel fantastic in it. And you, people who love to do these projects on their own, I understand that, I mean, immensely. Obviously, I wouldn't be in this business if I didn't. And it, you should be able to get through it. And I think just having the right products at your, res- like, for instance, Venetian plaster. People love Venetian plaster, but the Venetian plaster that's sold in these big box stores that are like 23 or 24 mm-hmm. bucks a gallon, it's going to take you forever, and you're going to get disheartened, and you're going to quit in the middle of it. If you use a good product with good tools, you'd be surprised how fast you can get through something, and then you can come work on my crew. <laughs> okay, then I'll be ready to turn my resume into you. Right. I've always been so fascinated by the colors that you see in other countries. The paint intensities are so different, like in Mexico, like in Italy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, there are ways that, not an al- a fresco approach, but like a wash Sure. Uh, how, can we achieve that at home as well? You can. And color integrated plaster, which is really what, you know, when you're in Italy and you see those walls and they look like they, well, they have. They've been there forever. But the color is so rich and so intense. Um, you can achieve that, obviously, kind of the way I described to Lisa. If you start with a base color and you work up from there, mm-hmm. you can achieve that with glazes. But, um this is going to sound kind of crazy, but uh, a lot of homeowners love plaster, but they don't want to pay for it, and they and they want to try it themselves. And I would recommend going to a like a, a building supply store, and you get either lime, which is like the stuff they put on, um, yes. you know, a baseball field, and you mix that in with tint or paint. Tint you can get at your local hardware store too. And when you apply that to the wall with a regular squeegee that you would clean a window with. Okay? You know what I'm talking about? I'm following, yeah. A rubber squeegee. You get this effect, and it's called faux encaustic. Oh. And it, it looks like plaster, but it's done with paint. And it's inexpensive, and it's a very authentic looking, and it can be gorgeous when you sort of switch the intensity of the color. And you pick light. your own intensity. Yeah. So lime, give us a recipe again. Yeah. I mean, well, people are going to need to work this out, you know, mm-hmm. But but I always recommend two-thirds of your product, whether it's plaster or glaze or lime in this case, to one-third the color. And you can mix paint with it, which makes it sort of have this, um, like, pasty viscosity. It kind of feels mm-hmm. like, you know, it's heavier than it normally would be. Um, and the heavier you want it to be, obviously, the more lime or the more wow. product you add to it. And it's kind of this funny little trick that uh, that that works really, really well. It's beautiful. Let's also talk. It sounds like a great idea. I mean, I'm going to be tempted to try. Again, the phone lines are open, 866-675-6675. You know, we get our swatches, and uh, we, tr- we experiment. We may- will test cans of the colors that we're after. What's your technique for testing colors, whether they work or not? Oh, gosh. Okay, so that's a, a, one of those things that I also breaks my heart when I go over to a client's house and they have... 15 different swatches on their wall of these different little either quartz or smaller, you know, swatches. Uh, That would be me. Yeah. Well, first of all, don't do that to yourself because by painting them on the wall next to one another, you're not able to look at each color on its own. 
And that's very important because colors affect one another so, um, it's so unbelievable that, uh, I, without being in front of each other, I, I would show you this little exercise that would illustrate it better. But I would first recommend putting up one swatch and looking at it next to whatever is going to be next to it, meaning the trim paint, so maybe a white piece of paper next to it. Um, and paint something that's larger than an 8x10 swatch. Paint something that is, go get a piece of poster board and paint it on that. And then tape that to a wall, both in the area that gets direct sunlight and an area where there's a shadow. Um, the other thing is, is a lot of companies like uh, Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams will give you paint swatches for free that are larger. There's a, usually a one eight hundred number on their websites that you can call. Larger swatches. Larger I mean. swatches, and um, that way you a aren't painting your wall. You, they're arriving in the mail on five to seven business days. They're free, and you can pay, you know tape them up there and move them around and take them to the you know fabric. Great idea. Well, thanks so much for that. And also want to introduce you to Steve, who's in Tennessee. Would love to ask you a question. Sure. Hi, Steve. You're on the air. Oh, hi, Mario. Hi. Yeah, uh, uh, I'd like to know, have you worked with uh, um, texture paint? Yes. Uh, what kind of texture paint are you working with? Uh, well, I bought it at, like, Lowe's. It's, I can't remember the name. It's a, it's a it's a fairly good big name. Okay. And are you, um, what, what finish are you trying to achieve with it, or are you just trying to, you know, kind of figure out what to do with it? Yeah, uh, well, I want to make. I I did a, a full beam, and now I'm making it look like uh, a stone full beam. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. All, all the way here. Well, um, is this faux beam going to be in the reach of anything that would, uh, you know, I guess what I'm getting at here is, is it going to be out of the way? I mean, are, are people going to be able to walk up to it and touch it? No. It, okay. It, uh, so then, that's... joint compound is your best friend here. And, and um, joint compound is exactly what those textured paints are. They're just never going to tell you that. They've mixed paint and joint compound together, and they put it in a can, and they sell it to you. And it's silly. So a five-gallon drum of joint compound and, and your paint color is your best friend. And depending on how thick you want to build up the surface, you know, you just continue to layer on the joint compound that's either been pre-tinted or you can then stain it or paint it with glaze. And um, and you can create the kind of pock marks that you find in stone by right. just getting a sea sponge or a trowel and you sort of, you know, you know what I mean, by giving it peaks and then knocking it down. Yeah, that's what I've already done to oh, okay, great. it. Yeah. Uh, did what kind? Should you primer it before you go to stain it, or? Um, well, I've done two things. I've either mixed the primer into the joint compound before I put it on, and that sort of okay. avoids having to, you know, any any time I can avoid a step, I'll 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 do something like that. Um, but I would recommend probably uh, priming it, and you can tint your primer so that it looks more of like a stony sort of gray, or or kind of a you know a more of a beige color and then I would use again another round of glazes or stains to stipple or to age the edges and have it fall into sort of those little nooks and crannies you've created and and don't be afraid to use things like you know a, a hit of green or a little bit of a hit of like a lavender because those exist in nature in stone All right, you know? All right Steve thank uh -oh. you for your call